Ollery Mac here. If you're one of those people who've gotten yourself a Baofeng radio and you feel like, hey, I'd like to get some accessories for this baby here. Well, maybe you've gone and picked yourself up an external microphone and you think, hey, I've got it made now. I look like a police officer or maybe the CIA, something like that. Well, the truth of the matter is nobody's going to like you if you pick up one of these and talk on a frequency where everyone's listening because they're going to say, what was that? I can't understand you. You sound like you're in a tin can. Hello? Why don't you throw that piece of junk microphone away and get something real? Well, you don't want to do that because you didn't spend a lot of money for this or this. And what you'd like to do is you'd like to at least sound as close to having a really nice Kenwood instead of this. And you don't want anybody to know you hardly spent any money and yet you sound incredibly beautiful on the airwaves. Well, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to modify this little crazy microphone here because there's just a few simple problems with this microphone. This microphone has got a problem. It's got a teeny hole that's not in front of the electric condenser and what happens when you speak into it, it bounces the sound all the way around inside before it ever really decides to go into the microphone itself. So you sound like you're underwater with a pillow over your mouth and speaking through a tin can. We're gonna fix that, so stay with us as we make your Baofeng microphone as close to a Kenwood as possible. What you're going to need is uh, two simple tools. A pair of scissors, small ones of course, and a little Phillips screwdriver, unless of course they change the types of screws that they use on the Baofeng microphone. So, generally when we order Baofeng microphones they come in a package similar to this one here. So let's go ahead and tear it open. Now these microphones sound terrible when you buy them. It sounds like they're in a tin can and it sounds like you're talking through a pillow. Why is that? Oh and look, pay close attention to what they come with. They come with this little foam wrapper usually. If you don't get that, go find yourself some because we're going to need it for the project. So we'll set that aside. Here's the microphone. It's for your Baofeng microphone, or your radio. Open the baby up. Bring the microphone out. Do whatever you want with a plastic bag. If you will notice, this microphone, it has a very teeny hole. They put a tiny little hole right there. And that tiny little hole, unfortunately, is not on the inside in front of the electric condenser, the microphone element. It's somewhere down below because they don't want rain to get on your element. So if you want a microphone that sounds terrible but resists the rain, this video is not for you. But if you'd like to take your Baofeng microphone and actually make it sound good and not like a piece of trash, then this video could be useful for you. Here we go. The first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to turn it over and we're going to remove the screws. One, two, three. This particular microphone has come with uh, Phillips screws. I've noticed that some of the microphones in the past haven't got Phillips, they've got like a star. So that's where this little baby comes in handy. Let's go ahead and take the screws out. Now we're gonna take off the back of the microphone here. Pretty simple, huh? There's the back. Set that aside. Now you've got a push to talk switch here. It just sits in there. It's got a little silicone plunger. Don't lose that because that's what pushes down on the push to talk button right in there. You see that push to talk button there in the center? That's it. This is what pushes down on that. Let's set that aside. Now these circuit boards sometimes come with a screw here and a screw up here. Sometimes there's no screws whatsoever and they just put a melted piece of plastic there and there to secure this thing. 
Other times there might be a screw somewhere else as well. Depending on the model of Baofeng circuit board you have, they come in various different ones. But this one is pretty simple. One screw. Let's undo the one screw. This will expose the other side of the circuit board. The circuit board, pay attention to the fact that you have wires here. You don't want to pull any of these wires loose. The last two wires on the end here are the ones that go to the actual speaker. See where that hole is right there? That hole right there is the wrong spot. It needs to be a little more up higher right in there. So this particular electric condenser element that we have right here on the other side of the board of course, as you'll see there, that one is supposed to fit inside the microphone well here and there's supposed to be a seal around it so if you really want to have a quick fix on this go get yourself a rubber grommet that fits around the microphone element but snugly fits inside of this well since we don't have that right now we're going to use what we do have that comes with the microphone also pay attention here they do uh, skimp a little bit on their time when they're putting these together these right here happen to be the um, the remainder of the LED a little solder terminals here uh, it's probably not a good idea to leave loose wires floating around in your microphone and they certainly have done that so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to try and pull these babies up those little pieces of metal there we're going to twist them back and forth until they fall off because it's not a good idea to leave bare wires floating around inside a circuit board. Big long ones like this. Bad practice, so we're going to move them back and forth until they get loose, break them off and toss them. Okay, so again, same here. Move that piece of metal back and forth like this because we don't want to short our microphone or our radio out and that is a great culprit for doing such a thing so you just keep moving it back and forth until it gets loose and then pull it off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle of where I know that microphone element is supposed to have a hole. going to seal the microphone electric condenser into its little canister. They've got a little barrel in there that's been mold injected into the uh, into this part here right behind here. And take a close look of course and if you can see right here in front of my finger is that round barrel that that electric condenser fits down into. Now the mistake they've made engineering wise is they don't seal the microphone into this and so when you speak into that, into their hole that's off to the side the sound comes into the microphone body, it bounces around, it causes a lot of echoing a lot of muffling before it actually gets to the electric uh, element. So what we're trying to do is have a direct connect from the hole to the electric element with absolutely no body audio interfering. And so how we're going to do this is, remember I told you to hang on to this. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to take and we're going to place this over the electric condenser microphone piece. And we're going to also let it overlap the circuit board, oh say by about uh, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now if you can see underneath here is the electric condenser. What I'm going to do is I'll use my fingernail to score around the foam here against the body of the microphone itself to cut a perfect circle around the electric condenser microphone. Now be careful not to tear off the black felt because the black felt is important to keep the popping from occurring. But you see what we've got here is we've now got a piece of foam on the other side of the circuit board 
with a little bit of overlap on the edges here. And now I'm going to take my small scissors and I'm going to trim on the outside edge, not right against the circuit board, but leaving a little bit on the outside, about an eighth of an inch or so. And then I'm going to cut in, and we're just going to finish off by leaving a little square. So there you see it, we've got a small square of foam here. We have the place where it mounts here. Notice that there's not going to be any interference of the foam at that point, but over here is where the screw goes. So we're going to take and cut a little nibble where the screw is supposed to go, but do not cut so close to the microphone as you will damage the seal that you're creating for the microphone itself. And here we go. There you go, see that? Now the screw will be able to go in through there without compressing the foam. We don't want the foam compressed anywhere. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing over and over again three times. We're going to lay another one over the top of this and do the exact same procedure. Then take that off and put another one on and do the same procedure so that we have three of these layers here. And then we're going to take and very carefully put the microphone back in with the three layers. I've already got one that I've put together with three layers. Just to make this video short, we're going to only use one layer just to show you how it goes back together. But make sure when you do the three layers, as you put it back together, that you don't let one of the layers cover the microphone itself. So you're going to have to hold that in place while putting it back in. And oftentimes I'll do that with a pair of scissors just to hold the foam from being uh, from getting on top of the microphone element while putting it back together like so. Another thing to pay attention to of course when you put it back together is there is an LED down here that has to go back into the case's hole. Oftentimes this LED does not like to cooperate, will bend and you'll have to deal with it. So pay close attention <coughs> when you put it back together. So to simply put it back together, what you want to do is fit this area here and also the very back here you have a speaker jack and you have your rubber end piece. Well it's a plastic end piece, looks rubber. And you want to fit that into its notches so that it's nice and snug as well. Because the only thing holding that circuit board down is this black insert and this last screw up here. So now we put it back together by putting that one screw back in here like so. Now pay attention, look over around the back at the front of it here and make sure you see that LED because that LED, you put the whole thing back together and then you go, oh, where'd the LED go? It will have bent upwards or downwards, something. All right, once you get it this far, now I'm going to show you, of course, here's another one. But this one, of course, has got three layers of foam in there. Here we go. All right, it's all tucked in there. Not too hard. Now, remember, there's a little silicone plunger here on your push to talk that touches the uh, push to talk button inside. You want to set that back in carefully and then you want to take the back of the microphone like so and place it back on. There we go. Now we're just going to put the three screws back in and we'll have this baby all modified. Make sure the push to talk works before you can hear it clicking. And then put your screws back in. See that hole that we've created, that big hole just below the G on Baofeng. That is going to improve significantly your sound. Plus, of course, 
we have sealed around the microphone now so that only the audio goes from the hole to the microphone condenser element and doesn't bounce around inside the body anymore. And there you have it. That's your modification for your Baofeng microphone. And we're making a YouTube video on modifying a uh, Baofeng microphone and we'd like your input on two different microphones. Would you like to do that? We'd love to have Corey participate as well. Well, I'll tell you something now. Whatever you're talking on, a tin can and a string would probably be better. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, we've got a great opinion on a stock Baofeng microphone. This is Radio A, and we'll be switching over to Radio B with a modified Baofeng microphone. Uh, let's get Corey's opinion of this uh, stock garbagey Baofeng microphone first. Go ahead, Corey, tell us what you think. I agree with uh, Jeremy there. Uh, you sound muffled. Like you have uh, something in front of your, your uh, face while talking uh, to the radio. Very good. All right, gentlemen, we're going to switch over to uh, microphone B and radio B, and you tell us how you think the next one sounds. Here we go. One moment. Okay, so now we're going to bring this radio online here. Channel mode 2. Okay, gentlemen, we are speaking now on a Baofeng modified microphone. Uh, we'd just like to hear your opinion on the audio of the microphone. Uh, night and day, much, much better. Um, go ahead, Corey. And there you have it. Uh, I'm guessing that the signal is crisp and clear with lots of beautiful gain. OMG! Yes, go ahead, OMG. No, I was just making a statement. Ah, there you go. Alright, well, uh, that is the conclusion of the YouTube video on modifying the Baofeng microphones. You've heard it from the people out there who were listening. This microphone can be turned into an incredible mic that probably sounds as close to a Kenwood as possible. This is WE7OMG and I've got several more I need you to do for me. WE7OMG clear. Water is, water is.